So I've got this 2012 Mercedes-Benz GL450. The uh, customer's concern is that it intermittently does not start. There's no trouble codes uh, as far as what they've told me. This is from another shop, but basically you want me to check what the problem is. So I currently have it running just because I did get it to start. And again, for me, it's been difficult to duplicate it. it I've only been able to duplicate it a couple times. But mainly what the problem is, and again, I don't know if it'll happen or not, but you go ahead and put the key in and you turn it. And <clears throat> right now I've got some lights, but you'll get no lights and you'll go over the crank and nothing happens. You'll have to keep trying, 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 and eventually it'll uh, turn on the lights and it'll work. So. Again, right now it's working, but that's the main problem. Intermittent, no start, no power up of the cluster. It's almost as if the key is not being seen when you are turning it into the uh, on position. Okay, so what I'm gonna, I've decided to do is I'm going to remove the, I guess what they call the EIS sort of uh, ignition switch electronic ignition switch basically um and take a look at it get part numbers off of it and it's kind of where my gut feeling's going there is nothing too crazy about this i think possibly that unit's faulty but i want to take it out take a look at it and in doing so there's this ring you have to remove um you turn it counterclockwise i just use two pocket screwdrivers um, just fed them in there, turn this, that'll pop off. Then you have to remove this con console and radio unit to reach in there and pull it out. So first you remove the ashtray down the bottom. I've got it pulled out. Then you pop out this panel and then over here, there's a screw there and one there. After you get those out, you just slide that down and you're able to pop out this radio unit and once you do that you just reach in there pull out the ignition box and then unplug it so here it is and then there's a, a part number that I was looking for and just out of curiosity I'm going to open this up to see if I find anything crazy. If not, I'll just be ordering a unit and going from there. Uh, obviously, you just pop the cover along the tabs and you should be able to get into the uh, circuit board and see if there's any problems. And so just to verify that I got that on there correctly, I wanted to check continuity from the, the top side, I guess, of the connector to the uh, solder points on each side. Uh, I've got my meter set up. There's one, two, three. I'll do one, two, three. All right, so I'd say that's probably good enough. Good and, and solid on there. Good continuity. Um, I'll get it installed back in here. And once... I'll get that back in there. Once it's all back together, I'll probably just show you a quick shot of it turning on, but um, no different than one when it was not acting up for me. But I know for sure now that it's going to be uh, good contact at all times. OK, 
Okay, I've got the uh, EIS installed back in with the ring so that it holds it from falling. Before I put everything apart, there we go. Just to verify that the solder joints and everything are good and correct and nothing's messed up. There we go. And power's up. So, obviously it was intermittent before. Uh, <laughs> and I did not make it worse. I didn't damage it. Uh, it was my first time doing this repair. But after seeing that connector not be on the circuit board anymore and soldering it and now having a good starting all the time uh, I'm, I'm betting that this is going to be good and fine dandy and no more problems from here on out so that's it on this one nothing too crazy it's not what I was expecting I was again just trying to get some part numbers and, and order probably a new unit or I was going to try to clone one or so on and so forth but uh, I was glad I at least opened it up was able to see that connector that had come off the board and um, you know uh, uh, another repair where I was actually able to make a repair and fix a car without you know having to buy parts and wait for downtime all that so uh, I hope this helps uh, some of you out there Take a look at that board, that connector on the board. If it's come off, solder it on. It's a little bit tedious, but nothing that can't be done. So hope you enjoyed it. it got some good information out of this and that helps someone out there. Other than that, that's it for now. Until the next one, I'll see you then.